shouldn't be misled by the bright lights and signs that spell Hollywood. We're in Shreveport, Louisiana, where there is a constant, well, carnival-like atmosphere. The beat goes on, the party goes on 24-7, but the party won't begin until the final gun goes for that man, Jackie Sherrill and his Mississippi State Bulldogs, as Sherrill faces his former assistant head coach at Texas A&M, the present head coach, R.C. Slocum. His team trying to snap a current three-game bowl losing streak. It's the Independence Bowl, Mississippi State and Texas A&M. Back to Reason Ron. Jackie Sherrill ruled over the Texas A&M football nation for seven years. His arrival at Mississippi State ushering in the most successful 10-year span for any head coach in Bulldog history. Tonight, Sherrill confronts his past, his own creation, the Aggies. In the process, he'll discover how far he's come and how far he has to go. And look at this, an unexpected winter wonderland right in the heart of Cajun country, Shreveport, Louisiana. And it's the Sanford Independence Bowl, the fifth meeting all time between Mississippi State and Texas A&M. Hello, everybody. I'm Mark Jones from all of Just readily admit that the main storyline coming into this game is Jackie Sherrill's first game coaching versus his old school. However, also admitted, and interestingly, by Coach Sherrill, is that if he had to do the whole A&M situation over again, he would have handled it much differently. I didn't have to leave, uh, contrary to what people believe. And, and I left because of the... Uh, the loyalty, the compassion, the a lot of things at that time that Texas A&M gave me. And no one's ever heard the truth. You know, you've only heard a third party, and you know no one has the first party but myself. And you know, uh, one of these days when I finish coaching, then I will, you know, tell that side in a book. Now, Coach told me just before kickoff, he actually has three working titles in store for his book. One is, so you want to be a head coach. The other is, second chance. And the third, he said, Rob, with a smile, I just can't tell you that one. <laughs> all right, Rob, and uh, make sure you get all of us on the mailing list. Gino, some cogent points for today's game. Well, Texas A&M, this is your not your old Texas A&M team. They're going to open up the offense, and they're going to throw the football. And what do they have to do? Protect their quarterback, Ferris, if they're going to throw the football. In Mississippi State, who's bringing home the bacon? Pork Chop Womack, their left half tackle, back in action. They lead the SEC in rushing per game, but Mark, they've given up 23 sacks this season. Yeah, offensively, an interesting contrast in styles. Look at the temperature 28 degrees, wind chill is about 10 degrees, and the snow started about an hour ago and has not let up. We'll get more on that from Rob later regarding the field conditions. This is Larry Huntington for Mississippi State trying to get to the edge. And he is brought down near the 30-yard line. Starting quarterback for Mississippi State is Wayne Madkin, a 6'4", 227-pound junior, completing 56% of his passes on the season with eight touchdowns and eight interceptions. A look at the skill positions. Desenzo Miller, their top rusher, number 12, one of the key people to watch out of the backfield, Gino. And their center, though, Michael Fair, he is the key. Wayne Mack in the quarterback, Desenzo Miller, the tailback, and their center, Michael Farah, really the key to this ballgame. First down and 10 for Mississippi State. The first time in a long time that they have gone with the all-white uniforms, Williamson and Miller lining up out of the opposite eye. The snap was mishandled. AM recovers the fumble. An inauspicious beginning. The first play of the game, number 99, Ronald Clemens recovers the loose ball. And Mark, we talked about the weather. It's snowing. This ball is hard. It's cold out there. Just the center quarterback exchange. Mackin doesn't come up with the football. And Ronald Clemens, the right defensive end, comes up with the ball. And that's a good thing he was tackled because he was off for six points. An incredibly poor beginning for the Bulldogs on their first possession. And in comes quarterback Mark Ferris, number 10 right there for the Aggies to lead their offense. Neither of these teams or programs is what you would describe as cold weather teams. <laughs> first down and 10, Weber and Toombs lining up out of the offset eye. Carpenter in motion, and that's Jamar Toombs, the fullback powering ahead for a couple of yards. 
There's a look at the starting quarterback, Mark Ferris, the sophomore, although he is 25 years old, 6'2", 206 pounds. A look at the skill positions. One of the guys to watch, Robert Ferguson, the team's leading receiver, and they will pitch and catch. And they will throw the ball to Ferguson. He's about 90%. He's got two bad ankles, Mark. We'll have to check him in this cold weather. May be a little bit sore in this weather. Yeah, he did sit out the Texas game, their last appearance. Tombs, again, straight ahead for about three yards, running behind this offensive line. McCauley, Valletta, McKinney, Yates, and Brooks. And McKinney making his 38th straight start. He graduated three and a half years. He's a smart kid, and he gets this offensive line in the right place. There's a look at the defensive front for the Bulldogs. Davis, Galladay, Blade, and Wims. Wims, the best pass rusher of the group. And don't forget about Willie Blade. He was a semifinalist for the Outland Trophy this season. Whitaker and Toombs lining up out of the eye on third down and four. To Ferguson. And he is close to the first down near the 10-yard line. Let's take a look at the linebackers for Mississippi State's defense. They play just two linebackers with five DBs. Hagan, a big surprise, just a sophomore. And there's a look at the DBs. Depth, a question mark there, Gino. Depth, a question mark, but Josh Morgan, their free safety. He's going to blitz. He's going to be in a lot of tackles today. Red Smoot. Their All-American was declared academically ineligible a couple of weeks ago. Unable to play in this game. First down and goal to go for Texas A&M. Whitaker trying to get to the edge. Touchdown, Texas A&M. Richard Whitaker, the freshman, kicking in the turbo and finding pay dirt. And Mark Whitaker is their slasher-type tailback. But take a look at this on the run. He takes the handoff from Ferris. And look at him tiptoeing, trying to keep his feet. And he does a good job of it and just get, barely gets the ball in inside the pylon. A nine-yard touchdown run by Whitaker. Outrunning Sean Birdsong into the end zone. And Texas A&M able to convert on that Mississippi State miscue, the fumble, on their first series. Terrence Kitchens now. In to attempt the extra point out of the hold of Wes Bonovich, and it's good. And the Aggies out of the Big 12 with an early 7-0 lead. Jackie Sherrill's team taking themselves an early hole. We'll be right back. Winter Wonderland, that is Shreveport, Louisiana. Conditions certainly having an effect on the footing of this game. The natural frosting today of my hair, courtesy of about over half an inch of the snow in the last 45 minutes. Here's what the players are playing on. It's called Astro Play. It has tremendous feel. You can see I'm pulling it up off the surface. 100% synthetic surface. Underneath it, you have about an inch and a half of these black chewed up rubber pellets. It has great give on the field, but how does it handle these conditions? Well, if it's raining, it can handle over seven inches of rain an hour due to drainage. I asked the guy in charge of the field, that's great. How does it handle the snow? After a long pause, he just kind of looked at me and said, son, we don't get much snow around these parts. He has no idea how this field is going to handle, but I'm just glad I could be here to share this moment with him. <laughs> All right, Robin, we're glad that you have the right footwear today. You can see Whitaker on that last touchdown run tiptoeing his way around the edge, not wanting to fall down, keeping his balance. Skates kicking off. This is Huntington near the goal line. Skates is pushed out of bounds near the 25-yard line by Chance Pierce. Take a look at the Mississippi State offensive line, a huge one led by Porkchock Womack, number 76. And he's back, but Michael Fair, the center, second team All-SEC, he really kept this line together when Womack was out. Texas A&M, meanwhile, plays a 3-4 alignment to look at the front guys. Ronald Flemons, the one that recovered the fumble moments ago. Mark, but Ron Edwards is really the key to this defense. He needs to play well and plug up that middle. First down and 10 from the 25-yard line. Wayne Madkin in for a second series. Madkin has been bothered by a sinus condition all week. Missed practice a couple of days ago. Hands it off to DeCenzo Miller. Let's take a look at the linebackers led by Brian Gamble, who made that tackle just on that play. Christian Rodriguez, Cornelius Anthony, and Roy Lynn Bradley, number three. And Brian Gamble, former high school quarterbacks, makes all the checks for this defense. 
On the corners, the guy to watch is number 22, Sammy Davis. He's their top cover guy. But look out for the free safety, Jamison. He's very active. He'll be in a lot of tackles. We may see him blitz a little bit. Sammy Davis on the corner. It's lonely out there, especially in the snow. Second down and 11. Matkin keeps it himself. And Mark, there's that added dimension that Wayne Matkin adds to this Mississippi State offense. He can run the ball. He's very athletic. Mississippi State, excuse me, Texas A&M on defense likes to blitz, likes to play a lot of man coverage. So look for that quarterback draw. Maybe to be a factor, especially with the footing today. Ball on the 30-yard line. And Gino, you can use your little telestrator there to circle that <laughs> because up here in the booth folks we'll be honest with you we don't have a great vantage point with the snow down in the field they we're lying on a rise down in the sidelines out into the flat incomplete intended for justin griffith out of the backfield and it'll be fourth down and six from the 30. bradley in on the coverage and mississippi state will have to punt and Mark, any time a quarterback is throwing the football in these conditions, the routes you like to throw are hitches and curls because you can really drive the ball and really put a lot of mustard on it. You don't like to throw those little touch passes to the flat because the wind and the condition can really take the ball and float it, maybe maybe even cause an interception. And that can, Gino, here in the first quarter, throwing into the wind. We have a timeout down on the field. Our official wearing the white hat today, Claire Cosman. We're going to take a short break and then come back to Shreveport. Out of here in Shreveport, Louisiana, Mark Jones, Gino Toretta, and Rob Stone, Mississippi State, punting on its second possession. Prentice Cole punting to Mickey Jones. Low punt. Cole gets a fortuitous bounce. Texas A&M with the wind at its back. Ball down by Don Gentry. Interesting season for Mississippi State. Through the middle part of their schedule, they picked up some important wins, especially that one against Alabama, but then they had a chance to win out Geno and end up in the title game, but they lost two key ones to Arkansas and Ole Miss. And it's really, Mark, they folded in the fourth quarter. They've been outscored 51-7 to in those four losses in the fourth quarter. First and 10 from their own 26-yard line. The Aggies. Jamar Toombs. Texas A&M a couple of close calls as well especially that one against Oklahoma 35 31 losers and in Oklahoma they watched an 11 point fourth quarter lead evaporate of course when you play in a bowl game it's a great chance to eliminate all the bitter memories all on the 29 yard line second down and seven Tombs is the lone back, two tight ends, two wide outs for the Aggies. Quick receiver screen, Ferguson eludes one tackler. Lunging forward near the first down, back to the studio in a warm three stages. Well, Mark, Fresno State's getting snowed under in the Silicon Valley, but that's only figuratively speaking. Mike Deason from the nine goes in again, and Air Force is up 34-7 at the break. Okay, recent uh, conditions, as you can see, in stark contrast here in Shreveport. Hey, Mark, can I change my keys to the game? I don't think anybody can throw <laughs> the ball in these conditions, but Air Force and Colorado State, we had a chance to do it earlier in the year, and they did it very well. I'm not sure A&M can do it, though. Similar conditions, you're right there. Off tackle, Tombs again. And when he gets a load of steam up, it's tough to bring him down. Tombs with an Aggie first down into Mississippi State territory. Brought down finally by Josh Morgan and Kendall Roberson on the corner. And it's a big, strong, physical front for Texas A&M. Look at the hole Toombs has to run through. He's a big fella, six foot, 270 pounds. Look, there's a face mask right 
That's the only way you can bring a guy down like that with bad footing out here. Look at him trying Mississippi State trying to rip the ball out. But the big fella, I tell you what, we've got a chance to see a couple great fullbacks the last couple of games we've done, Mark. And Jamar Toombs definitely fits that bill, scoring 14 touchdowns this season. Toombs, Gino, picking up 34 yards. Ball on the Mississippi State 31. And this is Toombs again. You know, he's listed at six foot 275, the junior is, but speaking with him, he says, well, you know what? I'm, I'm really closer to like 260, 255. Oh, okay. <laughs> Either way, that's a big fullback, but he's very athletic. And I tell you what, just like Chris Carter, all he does is catch touchdowns. All Toombs does is score touchdowns. Yeah, scored 14 of them this year, half of their offensive total. Second down and eight. Ball on the Mississippi State 29-yard line. Toombs again exclusively. You can hear the chorus coming from the Aggie boosters here. They'll say Toombs. You'll hear them throughout the night. Eugene Clinton, the strong safety, making the tackle for the Bulldogs. And, Mark, it's interesting to see how Texas A&M has already adjusted to these field conditions. Whitaker and Joe Weber are their tailbacks, but they've gone with their big jumbo backfield and Toombs lining up at tailback and Stacy Jones at fullback as his blocker. Two essential fullbacks in the backfield. A lot of versatility, Gino, in that Aggie offense. Toombs again gets to the edge. Still on his feet. Toombs inside the five-yard line. Another Aggie first down. A touchdown-saving tackle made by Willie Blade. And all started the left guard, Chris Valletta. Watch him pull out in front of Toombs. There you see the block on the right side of your screen. And there's Toombs just rumbling and stumbling down inside the 10-yard line. Watch the left guard. There he is, pull around the corner. He, he seal blocks, does a great job of it. And look at Toombs. Boy, he is athletic for his weight and size. You know, the left side of that Aggie offensive line is where their experience is located. First and goal from the Bulldog four. Toombs, why not? Touchdown, Aggies. Texas A&M has jumped out to a 13-0 lead. And who'd they follow, Mark? The left tackle, Tango McCauley. And once again, the left guard, Chris Valletta who the coaches say, hey, he really has a chance to make it at the next level in the NFL. There you see the... Big fullback Jones in front of him. Toombs just following his blockers. No one has a chance to stop a six foot, 280 pound fullback when he's got a head of steam. Jamar Toombs has played his best games this season in the biggest games, namely Kansas State and Oklahoma. Turns Kitchens into a tip, the extra point. Wadovich with the hole. And he knocks it through. The men from College Station, Texas, led by R.C. Slocum, lead takes him on the left side. Valletta, he pulls. There's the fullback lead block. They completely seal that right side of the defensive line for Mississippi State. No one has a chance, like I said, to stop Toombs, the big fullback, once he's got a head of steam and he's going north and south with the ball. Jackie Sherrill, meanwhile, wondering maybe Gino. What have I created at Texas A&M? You know, he, he was really talking about the speed that Texas A&M had. He, was, he even told us, hey, they're going to be surprised by the speed Mississippi State has. Well, guess what? It's snowing, and all that speed on both sides of the football is neutralized, and it's going to come down to who wins that battle up front. And thus far, Texas A&M is doing a great job of owning the line of scrimmage. And we'll see if Mississippi State can respond because they do have the tools to get a power game going, a power running game especially. They did lead the SEC in rushing yardage per game at about 194 per contest. So it's not like they're capable of, uh, not capable of doing it. They've done it in the past. They've done it all season. And these are the kind of conditions that call for that type of game, as you just mentioned. And especially with their left tackle, Porkchop Womack, back in the lineup. He was all SEC, even though he did miss half this football season. They averaged, like you said, Mark, 193 rushing yards per game. So Mississippi State is not out of this ball game. They can play power football as well. The footing, treacherous down there. Skates kicking off like he was on skates. Into the end zone and out of bounds. The Bulldogs will start off on their own 20-yard line. And for more on the footing, let's go down to Rod. 
Well, Mark, just about a minute ago, you saw one of those sweepers coming down in the field trying to clear out some of the snow because it's really starting to accumulate. You know what the players are doing on the sideline is right here, you see on the Mississippi State sideline, that large piece of white plastic. The snow is accumulating in the cleats. The players are coming over like this gentleman is right now, wiping them out, smacking them out because they're really starting to lose traction. That, and they're no, they're no dummies. They're, they're getting their college education. That's why I'm over here. They're hanging out by the propane heaters. It is a good place to be, and if you need me, this is where I'll be for most of the game. We'll find you there for sure, Rob. All right, I'm Mark Jones along with Gino Toretta, Rob Stone on the sidelines. 14-0 here in the 25th edition of the Sanford Independence Bowl. Texas A&M and another fumble. Desenzo Miller, number 12, pounced on the loose ball for Mississippi State. The second time tonight that we've seen a miscue between the center and the quarterback. And it's so frustrating when you're trying to run plays and you can't get the center quarterback exchange down. And the whole reason Michael Fair's not getting that ball up, hey, he's trying to block 96 Ron Edwards. The guy is consistent. He brings great effort every snap. He was trying to pull and get a block on 96, and he couldn't do it and get the snap up. Boy, you saw that stat moments ago, Gino. The SEC's leading rushing team with just one yard rushing so far in the first quarter. Out of the shotgun, low snap, and another fumble. Matkin takes off. And he is brought down. After a gain of about seven, Christian Rodriguez, the linebacker, making the tackle. Mark, Mississippi State is going to have no chance unless they get this center quarterback exchange worked out. It doesn't matter if Matkins under center or in the shotgun. He's just not getting the snaps. They need to work this out, else it's going to be a long night in the cold weather. That's the third fumble we've seen on the exchange. Ball on the Bulldog 27-yard line. Their own 27, third and three. They have yet to get a first down in the ball game. This is their third possession. Williamson and Miller in the backfield. Complete to Miller, and Miller gets Mississippi State's first first down of the night. And you can hear those cowbells from the Bulldog fans. And here we go, Mark. We actually got the quarterback center exchange. Mackin drops back, and Desenzo Miller, no stranger to catching the football. He has 24 catches already this season. That's number two on their ball club. Miller, you know, playing with an injured shoulder. A shoulder that will probably require surgery at the end of the season. Approaching six minutes to play in the first period. Ball on the Mississippi State 32-yard line. First down and 10 for the Bulldogs. Miller into the boundary. Has some room, and he's near another Mississippi State first down. Brought down by Terrence Keel, the strong safety on run support. And the fullback, 32, Kenny Williamson, made a great block there. Now Mississippi State, hey, maybe the first 12 plays, they had scripted. They had to change with this these field conditions. There's the fullback. He comes outside, does a great job of cutting down the defender and opening up the hole for Desenzo Miller. There's a look at the thankless job of the fullback, Kenny Williamson. And another big guy, 6'2", 244 pounds. That's at the start of the season. We're not sure of the weights at the end of the season. They don't weigh these guys at the end of the season. Power, a big part of the formula for success tonight. And look at the discrepancy in the trenches, Gina. Look at that. 276 pounds for the Texas A&M. They give a lot of weight up. And it's the right end. Ronald Flemings is only 250 pounds. But you know what? They, the coaches say, hey, he can run like a deer. So look out. He's going against Porkchop. Porkchop Womack, number 76. That's 346 against 249 pounds. That alone is a 100-pound discrepancy. Ball on the 41-yard line for the Bulldogs. And we are told now from the sidelines that the phones may be out. 
So the coaches up in the booth not able to communicate with the ones on the sidelines. And the rules on that, Mark, is if one team cannot talk to their coaches up in the booth, the other team has to take off their headsets. And I, apparently that's the situation here. And what do you do now? How do you communicate? How do you get things down to the sidelines? Or do you just go by field? I don't know. Do they have any binoculars on the sidelines? No, I mean, the coaches now on the field have to start making the calls now. That's the head coach has to make that decision whether he's calling plays or calling the defenses. R.C. Slocum trying to work it out on the sidelines. That headset in his right hand dead. Second down and 11. Mississippi State with the ball on its own 41. Whistle. Whistle went before the miscue on the snap. Senzo Miller recovered it anyway. And a flag down on the play. I think that may be delay game, Mark, but the, once again, the ball's on the ground with the center quarterback exchange. Dead ball. Delay game. Offense, five yards. Remain second down. So we'll march this one off against the Bulldogs. The weather affecting so many different things in this game. Look at that. You, you can hardly see the play clock. I can't even see it. It's down there somewhere in the bottom left-hand corner. Bulldogs back on their own 36-yard line now. Second and six. Miller stays on his feet. And is close to the first down. Senzo Miller, a versatile back brought down by Anthony that time. Top rusher on the team, 996 yards coming into this contest, averaging 6.2 yards per pop, along with 10 touchdowns on the season. There it is, Mark. Barely, you can barely see the 25-second cock from far away. That's going to be all on Wayne Mack and their quarterback. He has to make sure he sees that 25-second block. That thing is a rumor from where he's looking. Ball in the Mississippi State 45. Madkin completes it to Griffith out of the backfield. He's met immediately. A gain of a couple on the play. And you're going to see both of these teams, when they start having success running the football, AM has already done it. Mississippi State now starting to get their feet, get the center quarterback exchange worked out. They're going to start using a lot more of this play action. Anything to misdirection. If, if the field is questionable on the footing, these guys are going to come open. They may break a big one just on a short pass. Second down and seven. Mississippi State from its own 48. to the tailback that time. Miller again. Stopped up near the line of scrimmage, tackled by Brian Gamble. The 6'2 sophomore at Alto, Texas, leads the team in tackles. Number two on the squad in sacks. This wrecking crew defense was really the blueprint of R.C. Slocum when he was Jackie Sherrill's defensive coordinator back in the mid and late 80s. And Mark, it's hard enough to get a first down on third and eight in perfect conditions. But third and eight in these conditions, almost impossible. Some lofty numbers put up by that defense during the course of the season. Third down and eight for the Bulldogs from their own 47. Madkin steps back and calls a timeout. His team trailing 14-0 when we come back to Shreveport. Celebrate the Jeep year-end clearance with noisemakers. We're not watching the Weather Channel. This is ESPN's presentation of the Sanford Independence Bowl from Shreveport, Louisiana. Now, tonight's weather conditions, nothing to sneeze at, literally, for Mississippi State QB Wayne Madkin, who suffers from a chronic sinus condition. Cold temperatures usually translate to symptoms ranging from coughing to difficulty of breathing. Friday, he was held out of practice and was sent to the hospital for chest x-rays for evaluation. He's been drinking his OJ and popping his vitamins, but coaches have no idea how long he can go for tonight. Yeah, that means, Rob, that we will probably see Kevin Fant at some point during the course of the evening. Fant played most of the game against Ole Miss in their season finale, a game in which Mississippi State lost 45 to 30. Third down and eight for the Bulldogs from their own 47-yard line. They trail 14-0. The Aggies scoring on a turnover, and then one behind Jamar Toombs running. And that's where we stand right now. 
Lumpkin had his man and overthrew his target, Terrell Grindle. And it's fourth down on a near miss by Madkin. And Wayne Madkin really wants this ball back because AM, look at this. They come in an all out blitz. There's a safety creeping up. He's got a post route, and his receiver is wide open. All he has to do is lead him. But, Mark, it's awful tough to throw the ball in these conditions. I was just going to ask you, you know, these kind of cold and windy, snowy conditions, do balls sail more than usual? I don't know what they do. I played Miami, Mark. I barely <laughs> played in rain. I didn't ever have to play in this stuff. <laughs> got the wrong guy. Sorry. We need to get John Elway on the phone. Prentice goal punting. Hangs one up real high for Chris Taylor. He lets it bounce. And it is down near the 20-yard line. AM with a 14-0 lead. And the Aggies on offense once again after that 33-yard punt. Story of the game so far has been the big fullback. 275-pound Jamar Toons running eight times for a total of 73 yards on the last touchdown drive by Texas A&M. And Mark all over their left side. Their left side is really the experienced, biggest, and most athletic part of their offensive line. And Texas A&M has made no bones about it early. We're running for our strength. Toombs and Jones lining up out of the eye on first and ten. It's Toombs again over the left side again. Brought down a different result this time. The charge led by number 98, Mario Hagan. And a great job by the Mississippi State defense. Texas A&M overloaded the left side of the line with an off-balance set, brought a tight end over, and Mississippi State slammed their defense towards it, and it was the first time they were able to stop Toons. Still on the 20-yard line. It is second down and 10 for Texas A&M. Toombs and Jones lining up out of the eye. Toombs between the tackles this time. It's about five. Brought down by Wims and Galladay. Mark, let's take a look at the footing. Toombs here, his first couple steps are ginger, but look at him once he gets the football. He really starts, look at him, trying to get his footing so he's not going to slip on his start, but when it, once he gets the ball and starts to get going a little bit, there's no stopping this kid. There you see the first couple steps, he hits the hole and he's saying, boy, I'm getting through there. Third down and three from the Aggies' own 27. Toombs, usually a sure bet in short yarded situations. Not sure that he got there this time. It's gonna be fourth down, Mark. He is clearly short, probably by a yard. Lots of Physical play in the middle, Toby Galladay, the 6'2 senior that time, making the tackle on Toombs. And it'll be fourth down, the Aggie punt team comes in. Cody skates to punt. Skates, their punter, is a freshman, freshman All-American. He's a weapon, average over 40 yards per punt this season. Back deep is number 22 right there, Larry Huntington. Low line drive, end over end, punt. And it's down at about the 32 yard line by Jonte Buell. A 39 yard punt, nothing on the return. Bulldogs with the ball with 27 seconds to play, and this is the first quarter. And this could be a wideout for Mississippi State. Walker and Griffith in the backfield. Ball on the Bulldog 32-yard line. Another fumbled snap. The fourth one tonight. Madkin recovering it, though. He and Fair are going to have to work this thing out. Michael Fair is one of the team captains. He's played every snap this year. Mark, I think that Madkin, it looks like the center's really staying in. He got the ball up. It looks like it hit the quarterback Madkin's top hand. But I tell you what, after this drive, these two really need to just stand on the sidelines and take about 10 or 15 snaps, making sure they got it down. First 15 minutes are in the books. Jamar trying to entomb the hopes of Mississippi State as a and leads 14-0 when we come back. 
Independence Bowl. Texas A&M leading 14 to nothing. You don't usually see this kind of snow in Cajun country, Rob Stone. No, not at all. I mean, people down here don't even know how to make snow angels, much less clear the field. They have one truck right here, and it just got done running over the goal line and the, and the five and the ten yard line, trying to clear it for the, so the referees can see it. It covers about a six foot yard swath of territory, but that's all they got, and that's all they can do right now. Well, it sure helps us out, Rob, up here in the booth. We can at least see where the goal lines are now. Running off tackle is Griffith on first and ten. He has a Mississippi State first down out near midfield. The best run of the night for Mississippi State. Keel making the tackle. And Shreveport not necessarily ready for the snow, and it doesn't. Apparently, Mississippi State quarterback Wayne Mackin isn't either because he's fumbled three to four snaps already. And unless they get it worked out, like I said earlier, Mark, it's going to be a long night. They have the ball right now on their own 44-yard line. First down and 10. As the mishandled snaps continue to pile up. Play clock down at 5. This is Walker, Dante Walker, with his first carry of the night. Out on Texas A&M side of midfield, tackled by the free safety, Jamison. Walker came into the game with 795 yards rushing, nine touchdowns on the season. Nice little change of pace. He's a little faster than Desenzo Miller. And not too shabby, Mark, averaging over five yards a carry. Both these backs, Desenzo Miller and Walker, averaging over five yards a carry. You have to credit the offensive line of Mississippi State. The Bulldog line, they're a bunch of big boys up front. AM coming on a blitz. He's got him wide open. Atkin has a man. And through the arms of his receiver, 15 Grindle. Can't help but wonder if looking back into the snow and the footing might have affected him there. Mark, he's beaten Sammy Davis on a post, and it looks like Grindle's got him beat. Davis trips and falls, and I think just that little clip of his foot, you know, a good no call by the official on a no pass, not in pass interference call, but Madkin had his man again wide open on the post. Texas A&M is going to do this all night. They're going to leave their corners on islands and say, hey, you got to play a lot of man coverage. Big challenge then for Davis and Weston on the islands. Ball at the A&M 46-yard lines, third down and one. The toss to Dante Walker. He didn't get it. The wrecking crew reps the first down hopes on that play of Mississippi State. Bradley, Royland Bradley, a pro prospect leading the charge that time, along with Anthony. A great job of the Texas A&M defense just swarming to the football. The front four really gets the Mississippi State offensive line. They cut them down and let those linebackers rally to the football. And once again, Mississippi State will have to punt Prentice Cole. This year has put 16 punts inside the 20-yard line. Chris Taylor standing on his own 10. And a flag. This one appears to be against Mississippi State. As Chris Taylor was back for the punt return, took a hit. Miles Randall, who went after him on that 47-yard punt. And yes, it is against the Bulldogs. There you see Randall just goes after the kick returner. <laughs> That's a senseless penalty right there, Mark, because they had him pinned back inside the five-yard line. Now the ball is going to come out with the penalty. We have a timeout down in the field as R.C. Slocum peers through the snowflakes, his team with the lead. When research in Atlanta... ...just have their headsets and communication systems working once again. So Slocum and Cheryl with the headsets back on. First down and 10. Ball on the Texas A&M 24-yard line. Richard Whitaker and Jamar Toombs lining up out of the eye. Toombs has been the game's 
most effective and productive player so far. This is him again. Toombs picking up about three. Coming out of that commercial break, you can probably tell that they swept off the hash marks. And the officials know where to place the ball. Second down and about seven to go. Mark Ferris, the quarterback for Texas A&M, a 25-year-old sophomore, completing almost 60% of his passes. Mark, you want to play a little tic-tac-toe with my telestrator here? Next play. <laughs> Harris hands off, a juggled handoff. Whitaker got about one. Here's the hash marks. Here's the yard markers. And, uh, go ahead. Mark. I'll go there. All right. I'll take the middle. Take the corner. All right. I got you beat on that. Uh, let's see. I guess I'll go here. All right. There. To be continued. Oh, you won. <laughs> <laughs> the field uh, looking like a grid once they clear out some parts of it. <laughs> it doesn't last long, though, because the no. yard markers are already covered back up with snow. Third and three, incomplete. The Aggies will have to punt. It was intended for Bethel Johnson, number nine. Mississippi State now with an opportunity, perhaps, to get some good field position. They have the wind at their backs here in the second quarter. They have yet to score. Harris going to the sidelines. And, uh, Jackie Sherrill hoping to put on an impressive show against the school where he coached for seven years and against his former defensive coordinator, R.C. Slocum. Cody Skates punting, Larry Huntington back deep for Mississippi State. Another low punt. That has been the norm tonight. And Mississippi State will start with its best field position of the night. Hey, folks, don't forget more college football coming up for you. Capital One Bowl Week features the Outback Bowl Monday, January 1st, 11 a.m., 8 a.m. on Pacific Time on ESPN. South Carolina against number 18, Ohio State. Lou holds his team one of the big turnarounds of the college football season, and what would make someone wear, well, nothing. <laughs> How do you figure that one out? He's not the medical school here at uh, Texas a and I'm sure. Dante Walker, deep back out of the eye. Adkin going up top. Incomplete. Intended for Jenkins. Well, Mark and Gino, you guys had mentioned Mack and having problems holding on to the ball. During that last time out on the sideline, he came over and told the coach, hey, my hands are freezing. What they did is they gave him six of those little hand warmers, you know, that the skiers use. He put them in his pocket, tried to warm up his hands, and the coaches told him, hey, just get closer to the center and just worry about just handling the snap first off and then deal with the play after that. And they've pretty much thrown out all shotgun formations because of the difficulty handling the snap. It all starts right there, Rob. Good po point. This time, though, they do take a chance, go to the shotgun, and Fear gets it back there. It is being ruled complete. They're going to call it a catch to Jenkins. He went right back to the same receiver. And Jenkins, Mark, six, shirt, six foot, one inch red shirts, freshman. That's those little hitch passes that I told you I like. But I tell you what, in this weather, these defenders know these receivers aren't going to run a lot of routes against them. Their passing tree, their route tree is really cut down with these conditions because of the footing. Here in Shreveport, Louisiana, the Independence Bowl. Mark Jones along with Gino Toretta, Rob Stone on the sidelines. It is 14 nothing. Texas A&M out of the Big 12 South against the SEC West Mississippi State Bulldogs. Both teams coming in 7-4 and four on the season. Madkin. Incomplete. And now a late flag. It was intended for Huntington, who tried to make an adjustment on the ball. He was being blanketed by Sean Weston, number 31. 
was definitely being blanketed. <laughs> Mackin throws this ball up, like he says, tough to throw. But watch the footing here. The, the adjustment, and Sean Weston just runs over the receiver, Huntington, and a good call by the official pass interference. Automatic first down for the Bulldogs. Gino moving the ball and being successful on first down was something that they really wanted to accomplish, throwing especially on first down coming into the game. And it's even more important now with these field conditions. If you can pick up a lot of yards on first down, then you can take some chances and throw the football down the field on second and short. But if you don't pick up a lot of yards on first down, you're going to run it on second and third down again. And the Bulldogs were also looking, you would think, to build up a little time of possession and keep that high-flying A&M offense off the field even in these conditions, even though we didn't expect these, this kind of snow. I don't know if there's going to be much high-flying offense <laughs> here today. <laughs> We've seen that can go to the air on a couple of occasions on this drive. First down and 10 for Mississippi State at the Texas A&M 45-yard line. The Bulldogs showing their first four-wide receiver set. goes back to the same guy, number 22, Huntington, and it's incomplete. Working on Weston once again. It'll be second down and 10. And look, <laughs> look at the, the teamwork there, trying to get all the snow off the uh, off the footing. I think that the, the team are making a big deal. Snow doesn't stick into your cleats. They're not used to playing on this surface. This is not grass. It's not going to be muddy. Their cleats aren't going to be full of mud and dirt. All that is is a little bit of snow, and it'll come off as they run. Throwback football. What do you know about snow, man? <laughs> Miami. <laughs> I grew up in Northern California. I didn't have to play in this stuff, but oh, I snow ski there. Forgot about the blizzards up there. <laughs> On second and ten, it's Dante Walker running over the left side of the line, which means he was following Pork Chop Womack and Courtney Lee, brought down by Robertson. Let's talk about Womack a little bit. He was injured, suffered a stress fracture in the LSU game, and this is his first game back. Says he's about 90%. Which is 100% better than most offensive linemen. And even though he missed half the season, Mark, he was all SEC voted by the coaches. So this kid is one heck of a left tackle. But we'll get back to the stress fractures on how he actually... Big gaping hole for Walker. And he could go. Touchdown, Dante Walker. Dante Walker takes it to the a 45-yard burst, and the Bulldogs are on the scoreboard. And, Mark, we were talking about the left tackle, Pork Chop Womack, but that was the left guard, Courtney Lee, the 6'4", 350-pounder. Watch him pull around and lead the way for Walker. There's the block at the point of attack on Brian Gamble, and Dante Walker's off to the races. Walker with his 10th touchdown of the season. Came into this contest averaging 72 yards rushing per game. And the cool and calm demeanor of Jackie Sherrill continues from the sidelines. Westerfield in to attempt the extra point. Can't take anything for granted on the kicking game in these conditions. And Westerfield knocks it through. Mississippi State has cut AM's lead to just seven. There's a couple of Mississippi State Bulldogs wishing us all a very prosperous 1919, 2001. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Are you going to time warp, Jones? It just caught back in the snow a little bit. Mississippi State on its last drive finally getting untracked. And a big part of that was the pass interference call that kept their drive alive. Five plays, 59 yards, using up 158 on the clock. Michael John Martin, J. 
kicking off. Richard Whitaker back deep. And the cheerleaders, they haven't stopped either. Everyone still at work. Foraging ahead through the snow. Wayne Goins. And the fellows who run the Dog Pound Rock, the special teams unit for Mississippi State, bring down Whitaker at the 20-yard line. 9.13 to play in the first half. AM with a seven-point lead. And it is starting to come down on the snow. I mean, it's very tough just to find the ball on this kickoff. Whitaker couldn't find it. I don't think you can see the ball until it's about 15 or 20 yards from him. Mark, this is this is northeast weather. This is yeah. not down in the south in Louisiana. You usually see the likes of this kind of snow. The ball on the Texas A&M 25-yard line. Joe Weber alone back on first down and 10. Three wide out formation. Ferris rears back. Almost picked off. It was underthrown. Marco Miner almost picked it off for Mississippi State, but there's a flag on the play. That pass by Ferris really hung up there. Interference against the defense. And back to Reese in the studio. Mark in the Silicon Valley Classic. Air Force had a huge lead at the half, 34-7. Third quarter, Fresno showing a little pride. David Carr, Alec Greco had three touchdowns in the regular season. It's now a 20-point game. Kind of envious. Looks warm there, Gino. <laughs> it is nice in Northern California. Talked to my family. Wished them a happy new year today back home, and uh, they were all very pleased. It's about in the 70s in Northern California. Up in Toronto, Canada, where Hugh and Marjorie Jones are watching. I'd like to wish them a happy new year. 14-7 for the Aggies. First down and 10. Texas A&M with the ball on their own 40-yard line. Jamar Toombs, the lone back. Toombs breaks one tackle. Right there, you see and capture the essence. You cut through to the soul of Jamar Toombs. He breaks tackles, give you a lot of yards, Gino, after the initial contact. Have a look. And they ran the exact same formation, the wide receiver motion, the fake re reverse, handoff to Toombs, and the first guy that hits Toombs is never going to take him down. Galladay made the tackle. Second down and three from the Aggie 47. Toombs over the right side. Lucky to get maybe a yard that time. Let's go downstairs to Rob Stone. And we're joined now by Paul Donahue, the president of the Sanford Corporation. And I'm sensing this is a Sanford Independence Bowl you won't soon forget. <laughs> this is uh, this is incredible, Rob. You know, of course, we're getting all the blame being from Chicago. <laughs> this is an everyday occurrence for us, so we're taking all the heat the, that we brought the snow with us. But, hey, we love it. It's a great night and a great event. And what better way to bring in the new year than a little a little snowstorm? And it's not just you from the Sanford Corporation. you got a lot of other employees who are down here enjoying this winter wonderland. We've got about uh, 500 of our associates up in these stands that are uh, covered in snow. And they're having a blast, and uh, we're, we're happy to be here, and, and uh, we're looking forward to a great New Year's Eve. Hey, we appreciate your time. Thank you. Absolutely, Rob. Thank you. All right, thank you, guys. Blade making the tackle that time on Joe Weber. Bertson also in on the stop. And it'll be fourth down for the Aggies. What do you think, Mark? If we do a count on those 500 associates in the stands, you think there'll be 500 up there? <laughs> <laughs> they either have blankets or they're in the warm part above us. Actually, they're from Chicago, and they may be the only people in the stands that are dressed and brought the appropriate clothing for this weather. Skates punting to Larry Huntington. Low line drive spiral. Huntington's knee touched down at the 15-yard line. As 
the snow continues. The weather service said that it was going to hit about 6 o'clock central time. We're about 10 minutes late. We'll be right back. It's the Bonita Husky. Walker and Griffith in the backfield out of the eye. You see the backs and the receivers and quarterback Wayne Mackin all trying to get their footing before the play. First and ten, Bulldogs trail by seven. Ball on their own 14. Toss and trying to get to the edge is Walker, who scored the last touchdown. Folks, don't forget an interstate rivalry between Miami and Florida on the Nokia Sugar Bowl. That's January 2nd, the day after tomorrow, 8 o'clock Eastern, 5 Pacific. And boy, you know, they had a little punch up, a little dust up Gino Toretta in the streets down on Bourbon Street just recently. And uh, not sure who started it, but one thing's for certain. It's going to heat that rivalry up a little bit. The rivalry is back. We haven't played Florida. Miami hasn't since 1987. And I will be on a plane tomorrow to go root my boys on. <laughs> a little Freudian slip. We. Huh? There's Walker again running between the tackles. Tough running by Dante Walker. Came into this game averaging a little over 72 per contest. Anthony and Bradley making the tackle that time. A first down and 10 for the Bulldogs. There's the footing. A little bit of slip out of the backfield by Dante Walker, but able to regain his balance. And to be honest with you, Mississippi State's starting to come back, and it's all now they're getting the center quarterback exchange down. Haven't seen any fumbles in quite some time now. Tubbs in motion. Walker keeps his footing, breaks a couple tackles, and out near midfield is Dante Walker. Walker's had a better time of it than Desenzo Miller, brought down by Keel on the play. But Walker seems to stay up a little better than Miller in this weather. And watch Walker takes that. He breaks the tackle by the end. Evan Peroni, and he's off to the races. There's a nice little stiff arm at the end of this run. <laughs> there you see the slide. You, you think he was safe going in the second? <laughs> Ball right at midfield. Players on both sides. The seniors on both sides especially. Well, this is a game they won't soon forget. Tubbs in motion to the top of your screen. Ball at midfield. On first and ten, Walker hammering ahead. Tough running, tough sledding. Gaining about four yards. Dante Walker, a 5'10 sophomore, tackled by Gamble on the play, and he comes out. Mark, with well-deserved rest. With the success both of these teams have had, they have big, strong tailbacks. They're tough to bring down. I don't know if I'd even throw the ball. Our football so far from both teams. Griffith and Miller lining up out of the eye. Traction and footing becoming paramount here. Play fake. Madkin has one dropped on him. The tight end, Donald Lee, should have caught that and comes up with a face full of the white stuff. And we saw what the snow did right there to the tight end. It's awful tough to catch the ball, but look at the footing. There you see everybody trying to get the snow off their feet, but the players not used to this. Both of these schools from down in the south, they're not used to playing, one, on this artificial surface, but two, with the snow falling as hard as it is and accumulating on this field. And you know, I wonder how many of these receivers now and backs have gone to gloves. Third down and six. Straight ahead is Desenzo Miller. Gaining maybe two, the clock running as we approach four minutes to go in the first half of play. And Mark, this here, they may go for it on fourth down. It almost turns every situation. If you have the ball with good field position around midfield, I think you got to go for it in fourth and short. And Westerfield's long is just 43 yards. So Jackie Sherrill elects to go with the punting unit this time. Although, as you mentioned, this usually is a good part of the field for four down territory. Ball on the Texas A&M 42. And here he's trying to play a field position game, try to pin Texas A&M back in their own end. And the 
play clock winds down to zero for Mississippi State. Prentice Cole has put 16 punts inside the 20 yard line. The last time he punted at a penalty. And there are gunners on special teams knocked over the returner, which of course is a no no. Mark Jones, Gino Toretta, and Rob Stone down on the sidelines. And lots of dedicated fans <laughs> sitting here watching this in the snow. And this is the 25th edition of the Independence Bowl. Doesn't aim for the sidelines. And this one will be downed inside the 10. His 17th of the season inside the 20-yard line. Nice bit of pooch punting and special teams by Prentice Cole. The theme of the night, slip slide away. Safe when we come back. For the many members of the media trying to build it up, with animosity, but it simply is not like that, Gene. No, both these coaches are very respectful of what they've done at their programs, and, I, and I'm sure they had some great times together coaching. Look at the yardage for Texas A&M, and it's all Jamar Toombs. 14 rushes, 93 yards, and a touchdown. The Aggies pinned at their own five-yard line after that punt. Tombs again brought down, and let's check in with Reese Davis, see what's happening at halftime. All right, Mark, not to rub it in or anything, but we'll check in in Miami, where the college game day gang <laughs> is. They're waiting on Oklahoma and Florida State. We'll also look ahead to what we'll kick off the Outback Bowl with in the Day of Bowls tomorrow and the NFL Wild Card Weekend. That's all coming up at the half. Yeah, you had to rub it in. Although it is a, you know what, a it's chilly, chilly down there degrees. in Miami right now. I think it's in the 50s down there, so not all that hot down there. A little bit hotter in the snow here, though. Yeah, it's not golf weather here anyway. This is Richard Whitaker brought down after a gain of about two. And, you know, the two coaches are very competitive, Slocum and Cheryl. And when it comes to golf, well, here's what R.C. had to say. Play. I won, and it'll kill him for me to say this on television, but I won. We played in Phoenix. We were at a function with the Fiesta Bowl. We played, and I won. Last time we played. Now, if we go into winning percentage, I'd be way down the pole. R.C. wearing it like a badge of honor, Gina. But he made it a point. He said, hey, Jackie's one of the few guys. He likes counting all those strokes every round. You know, us other coaches, we just go out and have some fun every so often playing golf. But Cheryl is one that keeps score. <laughs> Ferris to pass. Brought down. Is it a safety? Not quite. Inches outside of his own end zone. The sack by Mario Hagan, right there, number 98. The big sophomore who lost 30 pounds since his freshman year has tons of ability. And Hagen, look at this. Ferris, nowhere to go with the football. His protection breaks down. Look at, there's the goal line. He is back in the end zone. Hagen's got him in the grasp, and Ferris does a good job diving out of the end zone, keeping the ball out, and avoiding the safety. But... Mississippi State, because of that's going to come up with great field position, Mark, with just 131 left in the first half. Mississippi State, though, Gino, out of timeouts. Cody Skates punting in the shadows of his own goalposts. And, Mark, they're out of timeouts because early on, bowl games, his team has taken a month off. They had a special teams foul up. They didn't have the right personnel on, on a punt team. And now it may come back to haunt them. Here they have a minute 31. They're going to get the ball going in in great field position with a timeout or two that really would extend this minute 31, but they don't have it. Inside always 2020, unfortunately, if you're Mississippi State. And especially, you have to keep the ball on the ground in these conditions. And look at the AM players all trying to get their footing because they know, well, they're thinking, maybe contemplating that the Bulldogs are going to come after them on this one. Both sides digging in in the trenches. Partially blocked. Heavy pressure, and someone may have got a bit of it. Huntington 
in the middle of the field gives the Bulldogs tremendously good field position. And the Mississippi State punt block team had great pressure up the middle and partially blocked this football. Watch the pressure up the middle. You see the there you see just a hand come out of the left side of the screen. Sean Birdsong may have gotten a bit. And the punter skates. He's live. He's in play. A little bit of frustration trying to get down there and get in the middle of it, scrapping around a little bit. First and 10 from the 21-yard line, the Aggies' 21-yard line for Mississippi State. Matkin on the quarterback draw. Nice gain. Close to a first down. Tackled by Bradley and Terrence Keel. They've got that center exchange worked out. And look at the snow that's falling. There's hardly any. That's just the start of the game. Here's now almost a halftime. Plenty of snow accumulating. But Mississippi State, now they get the center quarterback exchange worked out. They empty the backfield right there, Mark, and went back to the quarterback draw. That's been a very proficient runner. First and goal. Nice catch. By number 85 on the play, that is Harold Lindsay, who laid out and made a great grab. He was working on Jay Brooks, the corner. And Wayne Madkin puts this ball right on the sideline, but watch Lindsay come up with this catch and get his feet down and drag him inbounds. I think that's inbounds, don't you? <laughs> you can't really tell what well that sideline is. <laughs> Snow accumulating on the brim. Of Jackie Sherrill. Second down and three to go. An empty backfield again, Mark. Look out for the quarterback draw behind Fair, the center. Four yards shy of the end zone. Complete to Miller. Touchdown, Bulldogs. A little screen on the pass. And they are one point away from tying this ball game up. Under a minute to play in the first half. It was all set up by the good field position after the punt. And then they went the quarterback draw to Madkin, showed us he can run with it. And then what does he do here in these terrible conditions? Gets the center, throws a little wide receiver screen. Actually, it's a running back screen to Desenzo Miller, lined up in the wide receiver slot. And the right tackle, Kendrick Fairchild, does a good job of blocking and breaking a hole open for him. Westerfield in for the extra point. 54 seconds to go. The holder on this play is the guy that just scored the touchdown, Desenzo Miller. Starting tailback. And we have a tie ball game with 54 seconds to play. Not often you see the tailback, the holder on extra points. Three plays, 21 yards on that drive, using up half a minute on the clock. And we have a tie ball game. So much for me not saying they didn't have enough time on the clock to go down and score. They did a good job. Picked up the first down. The clock stops. But let's take a look at the touchdown here. Here you see Miller. He's going to line up as a running back, but in the slot. Takes one step up. Just a wide receiver screen. There's the block. There's the block. And look at the lane. Clear sailing. And the official, I think, is taking care of that last Texas A&M defender and not letting him get over and make the tackle. Oh, part of the playing field. Senzo Miller with 11 touchdowns on the season. Mississippi State now with 14 unanswered points. Answering after that Texas A&M early 14-0 lead. The 25th edition of the Independence Bowl here in Shreveport. Temperature with the wind chill at about 10 degrees Fahrenheit. And Mark, they had in the paper today all the memorable moments over the last 25 years. I think this game has to jump up close to the top just because of the conditions here today. Oh, yeah, this will be destined to be a story chapter included in the past. 
sure at halftime they'll do their best to take some of the snow off the field. <laughs> How's he fall off the seat? He's going to kick it that side. Wow. He missed it. He whipped. He missed it. Great field position. <laughs> Not quite sure why they elected to kick it without using the tee. But as a result, Texas A&M with timeouts remaining. And De La Torre, the backup tight end, recovered this. Look at the ball's not even on the tee. They try to kick it, just completely miss the ball. Look, there you see the tee and the ball next to it. And the kicker just completely misses it. And De La Torre, the third, third team tight end, comes up with that ball. Didn't even go 10 yards, Gino. And don't forget, Texas A&M has their full complement of timeouts. They have three timeouts left, a minute to go in the ball game. I gotta th say, Mark, I'm putting my big backs back in the backfield, Jones and Toombs the tailback, and see if we can hammer it home. 54 seconds left in the first half. No mulligans on the kickoff. Ferris going up top. Touchdown, Ferguson! Go to Toombs running it, but a great call with the play action by the offensive coordinator Steve Cragthorpe, but all set up by a botched kickoff attempt. Not on the tee, they go for the field goal, and De La Torre, the tight end, jumps on the ball. He's very aware. Here's the tight end, Ferguson, or the wide receiver going down the sidelines. You see the defender slip. Ferguson does a great job of just catching the ball. And Ferris is saying, hey, that's not the best throw in the world under these conditions, but heck, it's a touchdown. <laughs> Ferguson, who missed the season finale with injuries, coming back to score that touchdown for AM. And that is the kicker, John Michael Marlin, who whiffed. Would have loved to have taken a mulligan on that kickoff. But instead, it set up Texas A&M's touchdown. Freeport, Louisiana. Back for the extra point. Ferris was big on that last completion to Ferguson. Before that 42-yard pass, he was two for three. And he missed the extra point. Kitchens misses the extra point. So the lead is six as opposed to seven. As I intimated earlier, you can't take anything for granted in the kicking game in this kind of inclement weather. Texas A&M maybe having learned a lesson from the Mississippi State miscue using the team on the kickoff. Who skates to kick off? And he squibs it. This is Huntington. Huntington tiptoeing his way down the sidelines in good field position, but there's a flag down in the play. Skates, the kicker, making the tackle. Mississippi State is out of timeouts. See what this flag is about. One more look at that nice kick return by Huntington. And the play will stand. It's offsides on the kicking team, Mark. The penalty, of course, declined by the Bulldogs. So with 36 seconds remaining in the first half, Bulldogs trailing by six. They have the ball in Texas A&M territory. And last drive, they scored in 31 from about the same position. <laughs> Ball is on the Aggie 36 yard line after that 42 yard return by Huntington. We've already seen a couple of touchdowns in the last minute. The Bulldogs do have the wind at their back. Should they elect a field goal at the end of this drive? Atkin to pass. And losing valuable yardage on the sack. Ron 
Edwards providing the pressure for the wrecking crew defense. Don't forget, coming up next on the Dodge Halftime Report, in just a few moments, news from the Orange Bowl, the Outback Bowl preview, and action from the NFL playoff seat. Mississippi State, no timeouts remaining. It took a long time to get that play off. Complete to Miller. Senzo Miller lunges forward, slipping and sliding down to the 20, brought down by Cornelius Anthony. An angel in the snow? Not quite. <laughs> We're going to go back to the studio. 20 to 14 at halftime. Flip spot. Only had four. Oh, I think I like Florida State in that game. They have a lot of talent. Look at Pork Chop just <laughs> dominating this guy. <laughs> Roiland Bradley having a tough time escaping the big fella. Ball in the 30 yard line, second down and six. Miller hot tied that time. 94 time Warren. Warren started eight games at defensive end this year for the Aggies. He's tied for the team lead coming into this contest with 16 tackles for loss. That's aggressive play there. Here you see the offensive line once again. The left guard, Courtney Lee, pulls around and able to get a lead block for Miller. Or excuse me, that's Kyle Wallace, actually the backup left guard. He rotates in with Courtney Lee, the starter. Third down and two from the Bulldog 33 for Mississippi State. He's come with a blitz, and they almost get to Madkin, an incomplete pass. They got to him enough to get his face mask there, Mark. That's going to be a late face mask. It's going to be a five-yard penalty and a first down. Cornelius Anthony in on the pressure that time. Personal foul. It's going to be a 15-yard face mask penalty. Got a good hold of it that time. You see the blitz tries to get over the block of the of the running back Justin Griffith he does but comes up with face mask of Wayne Mackin that's a big play 15 yards and a first down keeps the drive alive for the Bulldogs with 520 to play in the third quarter RC Slocum's team trailing by one point they led 14 to nothing at one point early in the first half and Mark, this has been an impressive outing so far for Mississippi State. This is a Texas A&M defense that only gives up, on average, 17.8 points a game. They're number two in their conference in the Big 12. And they have done, given the A&M defense fits, they've been able to run the ball really right down their throats. Yeah, they are a running team, the Bulldogs are, averaging 194 yards on the ground per game. Near midfield at the Mississippi State 48, first down and 10. Play fake by Madkin. Incomplete intended for Clarence Parker. Incomplete. Meanwhile, Justin Jenkins was downfield on the post pattern. It'll be second down and ten. from the 48-yard line of Mississippi State. Madkin checking at the line. Checks them into a handoff to the fullback. Justin Griffith gets maybe two. It'll be third down. About eight to go for Mississippi State. And look for Mississippi State to really start exploiting this interior of the defensive line for AM. Ron Edwards, we just got work. He has a broken hand. He's not in the game right now. And Stephen Young is he's a quality backup and his backup, but really the coaches even felt Mike Hank was the defensive coordinator for AM. We need Edwards to have a great game today. And there's that thing. There you see the, the club on his left hand. Third and seven for the Bulldogs. And Wayne Madkin calls timeout. 
their first one here in the second half. And you think they'd be a little more judicious about using them this half. It cost them in the first half. We'll be right back. Man, I never get any respect around here. He won, I got to be number one in pre on His left hand, but he went to the locker room, had a cast put on, and he's hoping to come back in the game. Take a look right there. That's Terrence Kitchens, the kicker for A&M. He's got a bag wrapped around his kicking foot, and he's keeping it warm and keeping his legs warm. He's hanging by that heater the whole time. I said, hey, those big linemen, they get mad at you hanging by those heaters the whole time. I'm like, nah, they know I got to keep it loose. Now, Gino, I want no wise comments from you about kickers right now. <laughs> Matkin on the receiver screen. Miller breaks a couple of tackles. Finally tackled. Gains about five on the play. Brought down by number 99, Roland Clemens. And Terrence Keel, the strong safety. Hey, the Rob, Central Miller's been impressive. Rob, I won't give you a bad time because I know where I'd be if I was on those sidelines. I'd be down there next to the heater, too. <laughs> At kickoff, it was 10 degrees with the wind and chill included. Fourth down, about six to go. Mississippi State to punt. This is Cole. Mickey Jones lets it bounce. Just inside the 20, about the 17-yard line. Francis Cole came up with a nice punt earlier in the first half, pinning Texas A&M down on its own four-yard line. That one, though, traveling just 30 yards. 3.36 to play in the third quarter. I'm Mark Jones along with Gino Toretta and Rob Stone from all of us at ESPN. like to wish all of you at home watching tonight all the best in 2001. R.C. Slocum, meanwhile, has been the head coach of Texas A&M, actually, for 12 years, but has been a coach for 28. He's a company guy. First and 10 from the Aggie 17. Ferris wide open to Porter. Out near midfield, an Aggie first down. Greg Porter, a versatile receiver. He'll line up all over the field. Finally tackled by Birdsong, but a big first down for the Aggies. And they run the spread formation, and here's Porter, the six foot four, 220 pound wide receiver. He just runs right up the seam. Ferris does a great job looking off the free safety, hits him on the money, but just like you said, Mark Porter gives you all kinds of options. When you're six foot four, you can flex out and be that third, that second tight end. He does a great job of it. A 31-yard pickup. Toombs gets the handoff, runs over the left side. McCauley and Valletta. Probably got one or two on the play. It'll be second down. Stopped by Willie Blade and Mario Hagan. Davis also in the area. Mario Higgins, a very gregarious young man. We had a great visit with him, a broadcast major, and uh, a very ardent and loyal follower of all of the ESPN program. He wants to get into the business afterwards. He wants to take our job. <laughs> <laughs> what a charisma. Second down and eight. Four wide receiver set. Tombs the lone back. It's complete wide open to Chris Taylor. Taylor has an Aggie first down in Mississippi State territory. Birdsong making the tackle on the play. And Mark Ferris, almost 60% completions on the year for 2,500 yards, does a good job of finding Chris Taylor on the hitch route outside. Taylor being very prudent, catches the ball, doesn't bring a knee down, able to pick up valuable yardage and keep this drive alive and pick up the first down. Taylor was a key player in their game against Texas, had one of his better nights. First and 10 from the Bulldog 35 for Texas A&M. Toombs giving you that yak yards after contact. Connor Stevens and Toby Galladay making the tackle on the play. Stacy Jones with a key block. I'm Mark Jones along with Gino Toretta and Rob Stone. We are here in Shreveport, Louisiana for the 25th edition of the Independence Bowl, the Sanford Independence Bowl featuring Texas A&M and Mississippi State. The Aggies jumped out to a 14-0 lead. We're right now trail in the third quarter. 21-20. Tombs again. Stopped up after a gain of two. 
Meanwhile, quarterback Mark Ferris, six of seven so far today. 102 yards, one touchdown. Mark Ferris is something, we haven't had a chance to document his story. He's a 25-year-old sophomore. Came back to the program in 1999 after spending several years as a first-round draft pick of the Pittsburgh Pirates in their baseball team. You know, everyone talks about Chris Wenke and his success and the maturity he brought to Florida State. Ferris doing the same thing here at Texas A&M. Third and two. Toombs close to the first down. Looks like he's going to get a Toombs is going to get a favorable spot, Mark. That's enough for the first down. But Mark Ferris filled a big question mark for this Very Texas A&M ball club. Texas they weren't sure who was going to be the quarterback, whether it was going to be Ferris or now his backup, Vance Smith. But he stepped up well, and he told us, hey, a lot of those experiences in the minor league really helped me to prepare every single day to do my best. And he said he learned a lot from those uh, long bus rides and the daily grind that baseball provided for him. He got as high as the double A level and the Pirates fan hit 270 you know, had a chance to ask can he hit the curveball he said well not well enough <laughs> he learned he'd rather be a college football player <laughs> the Aggies with the first down at the Mississippi State 25 yard line trailing by one point under a minute to play now in the third period Toons and Jones in the backfield going up top into the end zone Incomplete. Intended for Robert Ferguson. Morgan and Miner back there on defense. Flag down on the play as well. There you see the play action fake to Toombs. And Ferris is trying to pick on Marco Miner. He's filling in for the All-American Fred Smoot and trying to get Ferguson the big six foot two wide out. But Marco Miner is all over this play. And really, Ferguson does a great job of knocking that ball out and really becoming the defender at the end of that play and, and not getting Miner a chance to pick that ball off. Yeah, Fred Smoot, the All-American, not here because of academic improprieties and shortcomings. Marco Miner, the man filling in for him at that right corner spot. 6'4", 203-pound junior. And the coaches say he does not lack for physical talent. Probably one of the best athletes on their whole team. 14 seconds to play in the third quarter. First and 21 after the penalty. Toombs gets about three. Tackle made by Ellis Wims, the pro prospect. Well, line for the tackle. Mark, the tackle's made by Williams, but I tell you what, Willie Blade is just dominating the front. He knifes through. He gets to Toombs two to three yards right, deep in the backfield, alters his course. A great job. 45 minutes in the books, in the snow. Who's going to gift wrap the victory? We'll find out in the last 15 minutes. We'll be right back. Louisiana. Don't dress like that at home, folks. That's the way you want to come out to the game. Looks like fun. <laughs> the fourth quarter is paramount for Mississippi State. In their losses this year, four of them, they've been outscored 51 to 7. They've had some late meltdowns, including in overtime. Ferris passing. Complete to Johnson. One man to beat. Touchdown, Aggies. They can pound at you or they can hit you with the quick strike. Right there, they hit the Bulldogs with the ladder. Mark, this is all the field conditions here because Ferris throws a simple hitch route and watch his receiver. He just changes his footing. The defender's frozen. He doesn't know which way he's going. And look, look at that. There you see he's off to the races, able to score the touchdown. Bethel Johnson 
Look at that. 22 consecutive games. He's only played 22 here, and he's got a catch in every single one of them, averaging over 10 yards a catch, and that's his first touchdown this season. Good for 35 yards, and Gino, they're going to go for the two-point conversion. Just as we mentioned, the fourth quarter meltdown by Mississippi State. They give up a touchdown. And they'll convert the two points. Toombs with the block and Whitaker with the run. Richard Whitaker gives Texas A&M a 28-21 lead. A little counter. Productive play for the Aggies. They lead when we come back. Guys on the sidelines, some of the security and police here hanging tough through the snow. Texas A&M leading by seven. Mark Jones, Gino Toretto, Rob Stone here in the snow with you. Cody Skates to kick off back deep. It's Larry Huntington and Dante Walker. This is Huntington. And with the treacherous footing, his knee touches... And that's where they'll mark it. Let's go back to the last touchdown. Speaking of traction, Gene. Mark Ferris sees the blitz, audibles to the quick hitch pass. Bethel Johnson, look, the defender slips, but then Johnson lets him stand up. He freezes him with a little juke move. And there you see he'll run right by Kendall Roberson. And there you see he just sprints to the end zone. And the safety, Eugene Clinton, not able to get over there in time to stop the touchdown. When you said he froze Roberson, no pun intended, right? No pun intended. Okay. Just want to make sure. Dante Walker in the backfield, the deep back out of the eye behind Kenny Williamson. The Bulldogs still having problems closing games out. Walker gains two on the play. Brought down by the safety, Michael Jameson. Time now for our Morgan Stanley Dean Witter storyline of the game. And the prevailing theme, Dante Walker's running for Mississippi State. And on the other side of the ball, the same for Jamar Toons. Look at the discrepancy in passing yardage, all because of two big plays all set up because of the field conditions. This is a defensive back's worst nightmare, isn't it? Quarterbacks, too. It's tough to throw the ball in there. Five on the play clock, and Mississippi State unable to get the play off. They slept on the clock that time. It's going to cost them. There you go. Cheryl is the winningest coach in Mississippi State history here taking on the team the program the school where he used to coach we spoke with him this week you just got the feeling that nothing would be sweeter for him, sweeter for him than a victory right now as we get set to play second and eight Deep in their own territory, Madkin keeps it himself after faking the handoff to Williamson. Gains about three or four on the play. Brought down by Ron Edwards. It'll be third down and about six to go. Look at the big discrepancy in passing yards. Mississippi State, like I said, they have to continue to run the football, but they can't get those penalties early on. Like we said earlier, success on first down has been the key for them to stay, keep the ball on the ground. From their own 11-yard line, the quick slant, incomplete by Madkin, intended for Walker out of the backfield. It'll be fourth down and six. That one a drive killer for the Bulldogs. And Texas A&M is almost guaranteed to have this ball on Mississippi State's side of the field after this punt. The wind, which was at Mississippi State's back to begin the third quarter, is not anymore. A low line drive punt, not a great effort. Jones lets it stop. 
on Mississippi State's side of midfield. And as you intimated, Gino, good field position for the Aggies. And only a 28-yard punt. Prentice Cole, the punter, we talked about the footing. He slips and barely gets that ball off. You know, we asked the former baseball player, Ferris, whether he'd rather throw for a 99-yard touchdown bomb or hit a home run in Yankee Stadium. Here's what he had to say. To me, uh, there's, there's, not, there's nothing like football. There's not, nothing like the excitement that goes along with it. And that's, that's part of what I missed when I was playing baseball because baseball, there's so many games, and the games kind of run together, and kind of it's just all a blur, but football, Every game, there's so much buildup around every game that it's really a big deal. That's what makes it special. So we'd rather uh, throw for the long bomb touchdown. Huh? But, you know, I'm sure you'd, you'd agree with him on that. I definitely <laughs> would. <laughs> Look at some of the people who have played quarterback in college football after baseball careers, minor league baseball careers. Ferris, we all know about Chris Mike and Josh Booty, who was in the Florida Marlins chain. And don't forget Greg Porter, their big, tall, wide receiver. He was a third round pick for the Reds, opted to go straight to college. He now plays for the AM baseball team as well as the football team. And Chip Amherst, who is in the Blue Jays system, is someone who RC Slocum has recruited and uh, no doubt will be keeping in touch with. Tombs between the tackles. Gaining about two. Mark Tombs has done yeoman work for Texas A&M. And Mark, we talked about the meltdown in the fourth quarter for this Mississippi State ball club. But this does not bode well with the great field position that A&M now has. Matthew Sherrill's team looking for their second consecutive bowl win. Last year winning the Peach Bowl. The ball on the Mississippi State 33. Third down and four for the Aggies. Switch up the tempo this time, run it to the perimeter where Richard Whitaker has the first down. Tackled by Josh Morgan. They move the chains with 11.33 remaining in the fourth quarter. Don't forget, coming up next, Sports Center, Reese Davis and Dan Patrick will give you the stories from the Broncos and Ravens game, the Bucks and Eagles game as well. And a reflection and images, indelible ones of the 2000 year in sports. What do you think about the year gone by in sports, Gino? Uh, what do you think of? What do I think of? Yeah. Being with you all year. Hey, I'm glad it's been a special year <laughs> for me. Let me buy you some <laughs> dinner after the game. Jones and Tooms in the backfield. Tooms breaking several tackles, gaining about seven. And AM playing a little ball control now. Birdsong making the tackle with Morgan. Look at Toombs here going over the right hand side. Great job by AM getting a hat on a hat. All the Mississippi State defenders are brought down. Big pickup, eight yards. Back in the year 2000, I think with some of the turnarounds in college football, South Carolina, Lou Holtz, dropped by Dennis Erickson, your former coach at Oregon State. Second down and two from the Mississippi State 19. They just get the playoff. Tones chopped down. Nice tackle coming off the strong safety for support is Eugene Clinton, number 14 for the Bulldogs. There's a look at Clinton who made that last tackle. We talked about the fourth quarter meltdown already. Texas A&M already scored once in this fourth quarter. Looks like they're going in for another score. Mississippi State, the fourth quarter, has not been kind to them this year. It really showed in the last game they played against Ole Miss. But in fairness to them, part of that problem has been compounded by their lack of depth and some injuries and some situations they've had in their secondary. Again, and after a while, Clinton making the tackle. You would think, Gino, that 
When you've got 260 pounds hammering at you on every play, that's got to wear the defense down. Oh, definitely does, especially a Mississippi State ball club that plays five defensive backs every snap. So they're in nickel coverage every snap, where a lot of the times team will, teams will only have, mostly only have four, sometimes go to three if they're going to face a ball club that's going to run the ball as much as Texas A&M is right now. The ball is on the Mississippi State 13-yard line. Tombs. Touchdown, Tombs. Pounding away inexorably and invariably the unstoppable, undeniable Jamar Tombs. More credit the offensive line for Texas A&M. That was the right guard, Billy Yates, and the right tackle, Taylor Whit Whitley. There you see the fake reverse. Toombs just follows his blockers, and there you see he's not even touched till he's 10 yards down the field and able to barrel in for the score. 13 yards in all for Jamar Toombs on that run. And he has roughed the ball today 30 times for a total of 160 yards, a couple of touchdowns. Terrence Kitchens now in for the extra point for the Aggies. As they have taken a 14-point lead. They have outscored Mississippi State 14-0 in this period. Number five is alive for the Aggies. We'll be right back to Shreveport after this. When they had, they've had several delay of game penalties today. They were had to waste some timeouts early in the first half because of it. Huntington still on his feet. Nice return by Huntington out near the 45-yard line. Barry Huntington with the big. Return. Let's go back and take a look at this right side of the line. Here's the center. The right guard, Billy Yates, and the right tackle, Taylor Whitley. Look at the wall there that they give Jamar Toombs. Look, he's got all where to, everywhere to go. The defender, the safety tries to come up, makes a play, slips, bad footing, able to get in for the score. The offensive line doing a super job tonight. Well, it's not uh, Doomsday, but it is Toomsday as we approach 2001. 30 carries, 160 yards integral part of their offense tonight not to mention some of his blocking gene integral he is their offense <laughs> <laughs> under the lights and in the snow mark jones gino toretta rob stone down to the sidelines here at the sanford independence bowl the 25th edition don't forget coming up next sports center a roundup from today's action in the nfl much much more and coach slocum his heat is cutting right through these frigid temperatures. There was a hold against the Aggies on that last play. And that's why he's upset. I think I'd say he's a little bit more than upset, Mark. That's as animated as I've seen him in a while. You know, one thing we haven't talked about, you know, these bowl games are important in the respect that it gives you a lot of momentum going into next year in spring workouts. It does that, but it also gives you about 15 to 20 extra practices, so it's like an extra spring ball. So for these young players, it gives you a lot more time to practice. That looks like a late hit by the Mississippi State. By Miller defender, but <laughs> going back to our point, Mark, it gives you 15 extra practices. You can really give the younger players that are going to be the need to step up the next season, give them extra practice time, and see how they are going to react to the pressure. And these bowl games important with respect to finality. You know, for the seniors on both sides of the ball, they will be judged and remembered for this last one was all about hard work did a lot of work on his dad's cotton farm in Mississippi penalty was against the Aggies Madkin fires complete out of the backfield is Donald Lee 
making his first reception of the game. And a first down for the Bulldogs deep into Texas A&M territory. What happens when you have to run the ball essentially every down? It opens up the play action. Mackin did a great job there of making the fake. And Donald Lee, a young 6'4", 235-pound sophomore. The coaches say he's very good, but a little raw. The ball on the 29-yard line of Texas A&M, first and 10. Flags on the play. Dead ball. Both start. Offense, five yards. Main first down. Once again, some communication problems for Mississippi State offensively. And I think that was on Lee, the young, talented, sophomore tight end. Coaches really like his ability. To fit. This is where, hey, it's crunch time. We're in the fourth quarter. We can't have any penalties. Mississippi State said coming into this game, you know, this is personal for us. We want to show that we can get to where Texas A&M is. We're an up-and-coming program. Gaping hole for Walker. Dante Walker touchdown. Dante Walker takes it the distance. And the Bulldogs are right back in it. A 33-yard Mississippi State touchdown. Dante Walker with another touchdown for the Bulldogs. And they trail by eight. A 32-yard run. Watch this Mississippi State offensive line. They come off the ball and give Walker. Look at the cutback lane there. No Texas A&M defenders in sight. And there you see Walker just turn on the Jets and get in for the score. Walker, one half of that running back tandem that gives the Bulldogs a great change of pace. He's saying, what fourth quarter meltdown? <laughs> Scott Westerfield heating it up. And they trail by just seven with plenty of time remaining on the clock. The Bulldogs looking for their second consecutive bowl victory. We'll be right back to kick off he of the whiff earlier which cost them a touchdown eventually Whitaker and Goins back deep for Texas A&M a knuckleball that stops dead at the 20 Goins run out of bounds Dwayne Robertson making the tackle on the play. There's the dog pound rock, the special teams unit for Mississippi State. The ritual, the dance, and they do it with near religious seal. Something that was started by Kenzaki Jones, a special teams player in DB a couple of years ago. And it's become part of the tradition at Mississippi State, much like the 12th man is now at Texas A&M. So many parallels between these two programs. Tombs again. Stopped by Willie Blade. By the way, Jamar Tombs has now become the first player in Independence Bowl history to rush for three touchdowns in a game. And we still have 7.47 to play. I think you're looking at the game's MVP right now, Gene, or at least a candidate. This is Toombs. Brought down by Galladay. We checked that. That was... Dante Walker, <laughs> just a few moments ago, three touchdowns. They both run really well tonight. Check that. You making a little audible up here in the booth, Jones? Oh, yeah. Got to okay. be able to switch it up. All right. We'll, we'll let you do that. We'll let you do it. And see through the snow, you yeah. know. Check it. See what you're working with? <laughs> <laughs> They're down in two. <laughs> I still say he's an MVP candidate. Three they touchdowns or not. Whoever wins, the, the running back's going to get the MVP vote. Ferris hands it off. Whitaker this time stopped up at the line of scrimmage. The charge led by Willie Blade. 
and Toby Galladay. Blade showing no effects from that back injury. But Ellis Wims now limping to the sidelines for the Bulldogs. And Wims was in there too. He definitely got in there and stopped Whitaker from being able to pick up the first down. Fourth down for the Aggies. And we have a new deep snapper. The snapper was out with a dislocated finger, so let's see if this backup deep snapper can get the ball back to the punter, Cody Skates. Don Milback, and it's wide, but a good play by Skates. A great recovery by Skates. This is Huntington. Collard out of bounds. Don Mulvack, the new deep snapper, a little off to the right. And a great athletic move by Cody Skates, the punter. The, he's only a freshman, but boy, if he doesn't come out with that, it's a whole different ball game. First down and 10 for Mississippi State. Don't forget, coming up after the game, Sports Center. Reese Davis and Dan Patrick. All the news and highlights from the day. First and 10 from the Mississippi State 40 yard line. Mackin looking downfield. And it's incomplete, intended for Terrell Grindle. Jay Brooks providing the coverage on the play. There's a flag down in the play. Sideline warning, Mississippi State. Sideline warning. I got holding on 31 defense. Well, I think you heard the official. Holding on 31 defense. That would be Sean Weston, the DB. Let's see, here it is, down below. Weston, the defender. Mackin has all day to throw this football. I'm sure that's, there's the hold right there. He pulls the receivers, pulls Grindles down. <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> that's definitely one of the coaches making sure the official saw that holding penalty. That would be a Mississippi State coach protesting vehemently. <laughs> Either that or trying to keep warm. Automatic first down on the call. First Even and the ten. Troopers getting into the action there. <laughs> 548 to play in the fourth quarter. Mississippi State with the ball. Right at midfield, the 50-yard line. Brindle in motion. Matkin going up top. What a catch! But there's a flag down on the play. Larry Huntington hauled it in. Is Huntington going to get called for offensive pass interference here? He was working on Sean Weston, and that's exactly what it is. There you see Weston all over Huntington, and it almost looks like a face go, was going to be a face guarding penalty on the defender Weston, but Huntington pushes off there at the end. The ball's up for grabs, and there you see the contact. He just pushes off there right at the end. Yeah, it was just uh -oh, enough to make a little, little space. space. That was a little bit of a ticky-tacky call there. I think the defender was turning around. It just it looked as if the uh, Huntington pushed off. Meanwhile, the icy cold stare, literally, of Jackie Sherrill coming from the sidelines. Very much a player's coach. His kids and student athletes really have a, a special kind of connection, it seems, with him. 540 remaining. Wow, you don't think this is a big penalty mark? They have that ball, Mississippi State, inside the five, if that's a catch. Now they're back on their own 35 yard line. 36, excuse me. Looking at first and 24. Gets 
Lions back about 10 on that play with five and a half minutes to play in the fourth quarter. Royland Bradley making the tackle on the play. And where are they going over? Look at the big fella, the big boy. Pork chop Womack up there to left tackle, and he's just annihilating the end for Texas A&M. That's, that's a definite mismatch at 6'3", 346 pounds from down in the Delta. <laughs> Look at that. That's body by Jake right there. There's lots of abs in there. That's the pork chop, baby. <laughs> he said, hey, I'm an offensive lineman. I'm going to bring it. Out of the shotgun, Madkin set up the screen, but it's incomplete. Intended for Miller. It'll be third down and 11 from their own 49. And Royland Bradley was bringing the heat on Madkin. If he has time to throw this ball, there you see the pressure by Roy Lynn Bradley and Cornelius Anthony because if he has one more split second to throw that ball he finds DeCenzo Miller and that becomes a big play. Pivotal play here for the Bulldogs with just one timeout remaining in the trail 35 28 450 to play 449 in the fourth quarter a &M coming on a blitz Madkin little contact and no flag incomplete intended for Grindle Sammy Davis locked him up I think Sammy Davis got away with one there I think that was just because of an uncatchable ball the officials did not throw that penalty flag and it is fourth down in comes Prentice Cole in the punting unit Taylor back deep along with number 83 Mickey Jones Cole hangs one up boy you talk about stick and stay near the five yard line Prentice Cole has done that several times tonight pinning the Aggies deep in their own territory a 46 yard punt by Cole That's like a little wedge shot in golf, Gino. You know? Not one of my wedge shots. They don't sit down nice like that. <laughs> Got the right spin on it. Mind you, the snow probably helped a little bit. Hey, don't forget more college football coming up on ESPN and ABC. It's ABC's turn next. Oregon State against Notre Dame, New Year's Day. That's tomorrow, 8.30 Eastern time, 5.30 Pacific. Oregon State and Dennis Erickson. One of the big turnaround stories in all of college football over the last two years, but especially this year. <laughs> well, what, do you, what do you think she's going to do with that? Would she dare? <laughs> no, she would. Would she? This isn't Philadelphia, is it? That doesn't have someone's <laughs> name on it, I hope. First down and 10. Ball on the Aggies' own six-yard line. Weber and Toombs out of the eye. Mississippi State has to keep an eye on the clock now with just one timeout remaining. Galladay making the tackle on Toombs that time. Ferris, meanwhile, very efficient. Not spectacular, but efficient 7 of 8 for 137 yards and a couple of touchdown passes today. Harris, just a sophomore. Mark, Willie Blade hasn't been in on a lot of tackles, but I tell you what, he's wreaking havoc in the Texas A&M backfield. He's getting it in. He's owning the line of scrimmage. He's altering the running back's path. So he's having a great game. That was one of the key matchups today. Played against McKinney, their center. And at 6'2", 318, you don't think the big fella can move, but I tell you what, he has some great quicks. Yeah. In high school, it's a little bit different with some of these other players. They were in, like, grade school, I think, when <laughs> I was playing. Not that old. Uh, second down and 10 for Ferris. Toombs and Jones behind him out of the eye. Toombs mishandled a snap, got it back. And Mississippi State's defensive front really starting to rise to the challenge once again. Willie Blade, who is one of their MVPs defensively today, Gino. 
Uh, he's unbelievable, Mark. He's been in every single play this season. 14 tackles for loss, five sacks. Watch play just knife through. There you see, he just swim move. He's right in Toombs' face, not giving him anywhere to go. Let's his defense rally around behind him. Man, he is a player, big time player. Ball at the AM6, third down and 10. Bulldogs big pressure. Picked off. It is intercepted by the Bulldogs, number 23, Marco Miner, with a major play in the game. The Mississippi State defense comes up. Marco Miner, the man filling in for the All-American, Fred Smoot, played this one like an All-American himself. Miner's going to get credit for the interception, but Dorsett Davis should get half of this interception because he's right in quarterback Mark Ferris's face. Ferris really just trying to get rid of the football here at the last second, and Marco Miner able, able to step in front of the receiver and make a big-time interception. With under three minutes to play in the fourth quarter. First and goal. His first pick of the career. From the a and 4 The toss to Walker. Stop cold near the line of scrimmage is Dante Walker. Dante Walker, the ball second carrier. Second down and goal for the Bulldogs. They trail by seven points. Cornelius Anthony. They have on one timeout remaining. And Mark, I tell you what, at the start of that play, I was just thinking, all AM doesn't need is an interception or a fumble. And sure enough, the Mississippi State defense comes up huge. Here's the goal line. We only got about four yards to go, and it's a tie ball game, folks. Second down and three. Griffith, the fullback. They run the ISO. Walker stopped up again. The wrecking crew comes up big. It'll be third down and goal to go. Bradley leading the charge. Royland Bradley in that 3-4 alignment for the Aggie wrecking crew defense. Front three, though. Ty Warren, Ron Edwards, and Ronald Clement doing a great job here. I tell you what, Mark, I know where I'm going with the football. I'm giving it to Dante Walker, and I'm going over my big left tackle, pork chop Womack, to get this ball in. Ball on the three, third and goal. They go to the air. Touchdown! The tight end, Donald Lee, wide open. So after two consecutive runs, they switch it up and go to the air. What a call there, a tight end screen, Donald Lee, right in the middle of the field, watch the blitz, A&M comes on the all-out blitz, the tight end shows block, there you see just the tight end middle screen, wide open in the middle of the field. Scott Westerfield now, a little shaky. <laughs> shake it fast. Oh, you showed you what he was working with that time. The all-important extra point. Only his second touchdown on the year. He only had 19 catches this whole season. There's none bigger than that. Westerfield out of the hold of Miller. And we have a tie ball game. A couple of coaches intertwined through their history. Cheryl used to have Slocum as his defensive coordinator. The past against the present. Slocum might be thinking about might be having flashbacks of that Oklahoma game where they had the game won before Ferris threw a late interception, which cost them. Same situation here. Whitaker returns the kick. Moments ago, here's what transpired. Mississippi State making the play that counted. Pressuring Ferris, and here you see the young Marco Miner stepping in front of the wide receiver come up with the interception that leads to the tight end screen. What a super call by Sparky Woods, offensive coordinator. I thought, hey, he's going over to the left side behind Porkchop Womack and running the ball, but no way. We change up pitch for him. Hey, in this weather, to have 10 touchdowns, which, by the way, is a combined Independence Bowl record. Who would have ever thought when this game kicked off? First down and 10. Ferris 
Tombs in the flat. And the defense has come alive. Tombs hit hard by Stevens. Connor Stevens, the 6'4 junior, making the tackle on the play. For little or no gain. As we approach one minute to go. On second and 14, Tombs on the screen. Stopped up again. Near the line of scrimmage. Stevens again. 49 seconds to play. I'll tell you what, Mark, I can tell you what R.C. Slocum's thinking. Can I stop this bleeding? This Mississippi State defense, they smell blood right now, and they're really going after this A&M offense. The Aggies with two timeouts remaining. Mississippi State with one. Ball on the Texas A&M 16-yard line. This, no doubt, will be a storied edition, a historical edition of the 25th Independence Bowl. Tied at 35. Stopped is Whitaker. Nine seconds to go in regulation time. It's going to be a timeout by Mississippi State, I believe. Hey, because Skates is standing on the goal line. It's perfect. And Skates gets off a high punt. Huntington. Out of bounds with no time remaining. And we will go to overtime. What better way to cap off the year 2000 for both these crews than to decide it with an extra period. We'll be back in just a minute. Can review of the overtime rules. One toss for choice of the offense, defense, or end of the field if you win it. Each team gets a possession from the opponent's 25 per overtime until the winner's decided. And really key to win the coin toss because whoever wins is going to go on defense, let the other team's offense go on. Then they know if they need to score a touchdown or just field goal to tie the ball game. 25th edition of the Independence Bowl. Texas A&M, meanwhile, trying to snap a three-game bowl losing streak. And they go to work on offense from the Bulldog 25. Tombs in the backfield. Taylor in motion. Tombs. Tombs diving for the pylon. Touchdown on the first play. Jabbar Tombs of Texas A&M. comes out with an imbalanced set and Billy Yates, the right guard and right tackle, Taylor Whitley, do a great job of coming off the ball. And look at that one play. Here you see the handoff. And look at Toombs. Follow his blockers. They just maul the Mississippi State front four. And there Toombs showing the good size and great speed diving in. Toombs has rushed 35 times. 35 that's a workhorse effort. Don't forget, this is not a given here, this extra point. Kitchens to attempt the extra point. Nudging Toons back to him for a minute. He's run for a total of 193 yards, three touchdowns. One of those backs that gets stronger as the game progresses. <laughs> talks about Texas A&M's ability to pitch and catch and throw the ball around now, but you know what? They can play smash mouth when they need to. Well, it's not too shabby when you got a fullback averaging 5.5 <laughs> yards of carry in a bowl game. We'll do it again. Kitchens out of the hold of Bonovich. They've missed one, remember, tonight. And this one's blocked. And he laterals it. Into the end zone. Julius Griffin. Good for two points. 
frustration. And guess who it is? The big play defensive tackle, Willie Blade. 6 2, 3 20. Knives through the front four again. And we get the toss play, the pitch. There's the two point conversion. Now it's only a four point ball game. Hey, a touchdown wins for Mississippi State. You know, Eugene Clinton was the one that made the lateral. <laughs> And then from there, it was, man, what a big play. He's getting the credit, but I tell you what, you better give the game ball to Willie Blade. Watch him just knife through, blocks this kick. There's no chance that kick's going to get off. There's, there you see Clinton with the toss there at the end to Griffith. To Griffith. Julius Griffith, and now with a score here, instead of tying it with a touchdown, they win it. Has a whole bunch of real estate. Madkin inside the 10, brought down by Jamison. If Mississippi State scores a touchdown here, it's over. They win. And Jackie Sherrill would have a win over the team he coached for seven years. And the man who was his defensive coordinator during that time, R.C. Slocum. This is his first meeting against his former team, Texas A&M. And Jackie Sherrill made no bones about it. Hey, this game is very, very important to me personally. And an incredible turn of events in this, the extra period. Implausible, maybe. Improbable, maybe. First and goal. Walker, stop cold. And it's second down and goal. The last time they were in this territory, it was two runs that got stopped up, and then it was the tight end, Donald Lee. Donald Lee caught the touchdown pass. He was wide open. Second down goal from the Texas A&M six. They gave us a little changeup call the last time in here with the tight end, like you said, Mark. And now it's going to be shotgun, so it looks like you're going to throw the ball. The clock's running down. They better get the snap off. And they barely get it off. Madkin. Touchdown! The Bulldogs win it! The quarterback draw has been run three times, and three times it's worked. And the last one... Nothing more important than OT in the score. The mentor beats the pupil. Cheryl defeats R.C. And for the Bulldogs, their second consecutive bull victory. For Slocum, their fourth consecutive bull loss. The Capital One player of the game, Willie Blaine from Mississippi State.